11 banalephant elephants. 11, 11 banalephant elephants. Mm -hmm. All right, just getting loosened up. Uh, usually we warm up a little bit before a drama class and I just wanna get my mind aligned to absorb the leader's performances at recent debates. He's very good at pretending things. He can't even remember how many times he put blackface on. Because the fact of the matter is, he's always wearing a mask. He puts on a reconciliation mask and then fires the Attorney General, the first one of indigenous background. What is Andrew Scheer doing? So basically, if we were talking in uh, WWE terms, like world wrestling uh, stuff, uh, he went right away for the jugular, he knows that to win, it's not so much about his ideas, but how his main rival is perceived. And uh, an interesting side note there is that we kind of see uh, somebody who's adopting uh, a repetitive physical motion to put forward brick on brick on brick with his points. So this is something that I think he might have borrowed from Stephen Harper, who also had the kind of bricklayer's physical uh, approach to communication, keeping his ideas clear and separate. I mean, Mr. Bernie, after hearing what was just said, you could have just said, hey, man, I messed up, because those are pretty horrible tweets that you made. And really, for me, I mean, it should come as no surprise to you. I believe a leader is not someone who tries to divide people or to pit people against each other. A true leader is someone who tries to find bridges, bringing people together. That's what a leader does. Jagmeet is aware that there is a triangle um, between ev uh, at play, okay? So when I say a triangle, what I'm talking about is the, the if I talk about them as characters, the way I would analyze a play, um, You'd think that that conversation is between Jagmeet and, uh, and Bernier, uh, but really it's between Jagmeet and all the Canadians watching. And I think what he chooses to do, knowing that the combative nature of the structure of the debate, uh, it'll, it was important for him, I think, to achieve a human uh, quality to his interactions and let everyone else fall on their own swords of disrespect and antagonism. Here, when people talk across each other or on top of each other, in a drama class, I would instantly stop that and say, there's no way that this is building a scene that anyone can follow. It's a waste of time and, and everybody looks like they don't know what they're doing because they're making no space for being sh affected by who they're speaking to. And that's the name of the game in drama, is watching people affect one another. We build this country together and we want this country to be like that in 25 years. We love this country and it's not because I want to have a discussion about immigration Mr. that I'm Bernier, radical. Only your role 6 on this stage tonight seems to be to say publicly what Mr. Scheer thinks privately. No. The way it was shown on television, you have a split screen, you have both people talking, Bernier is making his point, and you can see actually the moment where Trudeau knows what he's going to launch as a kind of one-liner to undermine um, Mr. Bernier and his arguments. And, uh, and you see that he is waiting for the right moment to drop it. You see that uh, as an actor and as a director, uh, that would have been a successful moment of listening and finding the timing to, to drop a moment where even though he's speaking over the other person, his point was in keeping with what was being discussed and landed with the audience and you even hear a reaction there. So that would be a laugh line in uh, the theater. In 2001, uh, when I was a teacher out in Vancouver, I attended an end of year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights. And I dressed up in an Aladdin costume and we put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't. I'm really sorry. What's most interesting 
if I were analyzing the character, is that he could not use uh, his trademark forceful drive of language here because uh, that drive would belie contrition very clearly. Uh, he could not correct it with a two-sentence idea. Uh, he needed, which is what you kind of saw, to be the ten-year-old boy with like popsicle on his face uh, <laughs> who wasn't supposed to eat the popsicle. So um, I feel fear. I feel genuine fear through that section because he's not able to use his usual tools to address the public. Um, and I also feel that he, he kind of loses a capacity to find a new message for this moment uh, beyond the contrition where I think it might have been very interesting for him to open the conversation on forgiveness when you ask for change.